All right, good afternoon. Uh, we'll begin with a recap from this past weekend. Um, you know, going on the road, playing an 11 a.m. game requires, uh, you know, for our team to think the right way. I thought they did a great job of um, thinking right about the trip itself. You know, it's easy to think about how difficult and how early, and instead they thought about it as, you know, a great opportunity uh, to be the first game up, um, to go on the road and uh, play four quarters with a, the competitive edge that um, they've been looking for in terms of playing for four quarters. Um, and, you know, there's always that sense of uh, playing early and, and getting back home. So I, I thought they did a great job of, um, you know, thinking the right way. And then, you know, you have to flip that switch from, you know, preparation to performance. And to do that, you've got to play with a sense of urgency and you've got to have the emotional control, um, but p play with an edge. And, and um, they got off to a fast start, um, you know, played with great effort and enthusiasm. There was, there was a really an attention to the details out there and, um, you know, finished strong. So that's what we're looking for from our football team. Um, that's an identity that we want to create each and every week. Um, and certainly one that we believe that we can be. Uh, now it's about building on that and, and uh, looking for that uh, consistency. There were some, obviously some great performances um, as highlighted by um, Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors being named the SEC Co-Offensive Players of the Week. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the play of the two of them um, – you know, was, was certainly elite. Uh, Daniels, 425 yards of total offense. You know the numbers. Uh, but, you know, I think if you really look at it closely, some of the things that maybe don't get the, the attention was his presence in the pocket and how many times he got hit after delivering, you know, a great throw. Uh, sometimes we cut it off and see the ball in the air, but you, you don't see the, the, the play all the way through. And, Made some great throws under duress. Those those are NFL throws. Some of the ones that he made, um, not backing down, staying in the pocket, knowing that he was going to get hit, and still delivering the ball with with great accuracy. And neighbors, obviously, his ability to um, handle any coverage variations. Um, and look, some again the things that that sometimes don't get talked about. Um, he maintains space on the field. Um, he carves out an opportunity um, to catch the ball. Um, many times we see defenders squeeze out offensive players. Um, Malik is strong and physical as well, and he can um, he can hold his line and 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 give the quarterback an opportunity. So, um, hats off to both of those guys. Um, great work, and um, you know, look to do the same. Um, I, I don't know that there's any reason why they can't continue to um, uh, play at that level. Um, you know, obviously, uh, defensively holding Mississippi State to seven total yards on their first uh, three possessions. Um, you know, I thought defensively coming together, um, allowing just uh, under a yard, 100 yards rushing in, in the SEC in terms of anything that you do uh, is a job well done. Third down, we were really efficient. We got off the field um, and, again, harassed the quarterback. You know, got the quarterback down, had sacks, did the things that you need to do in the SEC. You've got to play that kind of defense. So, all in all, um, uh, a great performance on the road and now something that we need to uh, certainly build on um, moving forward. Um, Get a chance now to play another SEC opponent in Arkansas. Um, I think we all know about this game. It is a hard-fought, physical game. Uh, each and every year, I think the last three years have been decided by a total of something like nine points, I think. It's, uh, it's a rivalry trophy, battle for the boot, annual, annual trophy between the two schools that started back in the, the mid-'90s. So I know our guys understand – uh, who they're playing, uh, and the tough games that we've had with them, including last year. Um, so they'll be prepared for that. Now it's about preparing the right way again this week and then, you know, playing with that competitive edge. 
So uh, looking forward to that. They've got some really good players. Sam Petman does a great job. I have a ton of respect for Sam, and he'll have his team ready to play. Bouncing back uh, after last week's loss, uh, he'll have his team uh, ready to go, and we'll have to respond in kind. Um, you know, K.J. Jefferson, the quarterback, uh, three-year starter. I think we all know about his size and strength. Uh, he can run the football. Um, Raheem Sanders, A.J. Green, two outstanding backs, uh, Armstrong. Uh, and the defense, although a new defensive coordinator, uh, outstanding coordinator coming from UCF. He's had great success, great pedigree in the SEC, you know, was with Kevin Steele uh, at Auburn. So uh, we know we've got our hands full. So uh, certainly um, looking forward to being in uh, Tiger Stadium um, this Saturday. Uh, we're going to take advantage of being there because we won't be back for a little bit. So um, we'll talk about that and um, make sure our guys relish the opportunity of playing at home. We had a couple of guys that did not play. Um, I'll talk about them briefly. Um, first of all, Omar Spates uh, had that what we uh, felt like was a lower body injury. I would list him now as probable. Ovia Gufu, the same thing, lower body injury. I'd list him as probable. Same thing with Mason Taylor. All of those will be probable. Uh, Greg Brooks is out. Um, uh, he, again, I, I don't have a lot that I can report on Greg. It is, um, it is a family uh, matter, um, so I'm not going to speak on, on the family's behalf. If there's anything that I can get to you further uh, after I speak with the family, we'll certainly give you information. But... Uh, Greg is, is dealing with a, a medical emergency, and um, he will not be available. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Coach, is it uh, right up here Just to your left? Is it Greg's medical emergency? Or yes. Okay. Greg, Greg has a medical emergency. Um, just the defense that you rolled out there you know, had one of the best showings of the year. Obviously, it had a lot of new faces. Was that the best 11 that you could put out there, or was it the best 11 at the time? Did you feel – really good about it in retrospect? Yeah, we did. I mean, we had a lot of confidence that, um, you know, Braden Swinson would be able to go in there and, and, and play at a high level. We had during the year, you know. Um, you know, Whit Weeks, uh, we knew what we had. We had a young player, certainly a true freshman, but, it, you know, he can run all over the field. He's extremely athletic. Um, you know, I think you, you get a little concerned when you play a lot of true freshmen. Um, you know, certainly in the back end of your defense. Um, Ryan Yates came in and thought played really well. He was clean. He was disciplined in his alignments. Uh, he was assignment correct. But, you know, you got three true freshmen on the field. Um, on the road in the SEC, I don't think you're running around going, oh, this is great. Uh, but we have confidence in them that they could go out and, and play well. I think what it shows more than anything else, and, and Coach uh, and I were talking about this, um, Coach House, is that, we have more than 11, and, and we need to play them more. It's kind of like what we talked about the week before um, with um, Guillory and, and certainly Jefferson at the tackle position. They didn't play enough the week before. where They played much more, and you can see how that helps our rotation at the defensive line. I think you'll see now that we can play a lot more at the linebacker position and the safety position. With that coach right over here, uh, you mentioned Spates being probable for this week. You know, how in your experience have you handled having a young guy like Weeks with Spates having so much experience and just handling kind of that role going forward with those guys and having obviously playable depth? Yeah, it's a good question. I think the guy that's really um, settled this for us in terms of, you know, whoever he's been with has been Greg Penn. Uh, Greg's been outstanding. He's a settling um, factor out there for us. He gets guys lined up. Uh, he communicates very well. Um, and, and that's a guy that uh, we want to keep on the field. So, you know, we'll be moving guys around to complement that. And, and I think, you know, the best rotation keeps Greg on the field, and then we'll move guys in and out with him. In the middle here, Coach. Do you ever think about over the last year and a half where you would be without Jaden Daniels? Yeah, you know, I, I he, he's been outstanding. Obviously, we've won a lot of football games. And certainly his ability to um, win the game with his feet or, in this instance, you know, throwing the football and running the ball, um, 
you know, he was he was as good as anybody in the country. And and we've seen a development now that we're what in we were in week three. I think if you look at week three last year, um, and it, was it the week we threw for eighty five yards? Uh, I think it was. And and uh, now he's throwing for. You know, 30 for 34. So we've seen incredible development at the position. And I think that that's what's more exciting than where would we be without Daniels. Is It's it's fun to watch the development of a quarterback in that respect. Uh, Matthew Bruin on three. Uh, Mason Smith now through two games. Just how have you seen him continue to get comfortable and where do you think he's at? Yeah, I think he's getting there. I mean, we saw some things that he, he wasn't doing against Grambling that now he's starting to impact the game a little bit more. And I think that will continue to grow as he continues to play himself in, in a position where he can play at a high level each and every snap. So, you know, he's, he's uh, physically a, a presence in there. And uh, we expect him to uh, continue as the season progresses. Um, he's going to be an impact player for us. So feel good about where he's gone uh, over the last couple of weeks and um, expect to see more of him um, as we move forward. Yeah, Brian, in the, in the middle, sorry. Yeah. Um, you've gone for it eight times on fourth down so far this year. It would have been nine um, with the, the first drive on Saturday. Right, right. Um, does that have anything to do with the, the clock changes? Have you philosophically changed it all just – when you, you decide to be aggressive and when not to? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I've talked about this a little bit before. I, I think I use a combination of good sense in terms of what the game feels like. We use analytics, so I'm, I'm plugged into what the analytics are telling me relative to fourth down. And as you know, you know most of the analytics are, are, are much more aggressive than we are as we watch the game, right? You know, fourth and, you know, two or three, um, used to be considering a field goal inside the 10. Now it's almost 100% go for it. Um, so I think it's a combination of getting a sense and feel for the game and how, how you feel like you might have control or not control of the game, plus the use of analytics. Um, and then when you have a quarterback that, that is multidimensional, uh, it really puts a defense in a bind. So I think we have those three factors working for us when we get to fourth down calls. Uh, hey, Coach, right down here. Um, just, you know, it's two years now in a row where you guys have played freshmen early in their careers and they've largely responded. Just, I'm wondering just as a whole, though, how does that affect you guys on the recruiting trail? I mean, just over the last couple of weeks, I know you can't go into specifics with this, but just the conversations and stuff that you're talking to with these recruits about just you come here and you develop and you can see the field early and, and play often with us. Yeah, look, everybody I think is – you know, in this recruiting uh, cycle, um, you know, we're recruiting young men that, that believe and, and have confidence uh, in themselves that they can play right away. Um, and, and certainly there are other factors that uh, they consider now uh, in making decisions on where to go, looking at the depth chart and, and looking at, well, you know, can this help my, you know, NIL? I mean, there are other factors now involved in that. So what we can tell them, and this is what I tell them all the time, um, I'm not afraid to play freshmen, um, but I'm going to play the best players. And, and if that is a freshman, I'm playing a freshman. If that's a graduate transfer, I'll play a graduate transfer. And um, I think our track record shows that, the best players are going to play. And if you're a freshman and you can handle it um, mentally and physically, we'll put you on the field. Hey Brian, speaking of freshmen, of all the great plays you guys had Saturday, the one that got the most attention in replay was Caleb Jackson yeah. uh, running over the safety <laughs> right in front of your bench. I was kind of curious what went through your mind when that play happened. And, and, and we see uh, media fans we and, and fans, we see a uh, – you know, a player who's making great individuals plays. Do you see the same thing, or you see someone who's still developing and still has a lot to learn? Or you know, where where are you with with him and what he can contribute to the team? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the obvious answer is a physicality, uh, explosiveness, 
um, but a young man that is still learning how to play this game. Remember now, if you look back on his high school career, he, he was not a four-year player even in high school. So, you know, he's learning how to play the game every time he steps on the field. And he's terrific to coach. I mean, you know, the great part about it is he doesn't have much baggage. You know, he's learning a lot about the game as we go along. You know, we're talking to him about, um, you know, some of the rules as it relates to kickoff. You know, if the, if the impetus of the ball goes into the end zone and it hits you, it's, it, you don't have to take it out. These are foreign things to him. So, you know, just teaching him the game and him learning the game is kind of where we're at with him. Um, but it's easy to see the raw physical ability. But there's so much more to that. And that's, that's if you, and I know you did, you watched the game closely, you saw what Diggs and, and Williams were able to do in third down protections against a very difficult scheme. Caleb's not ready for that. He will get ready for that, but he's just not there yet. Uh, Coach Savion Jones seemed to really impact the game early, pressure on the first drive, sack on the second drive. What are you seeing out of him? Just moving better. You know, here's a bigger guy that is starting to, to come into his size. Um, you know, he, he, he put on a lot of weight in the offseason. Good weight, um, but, but he's now having to play um, more football than he's ever played. Um, he's, he's starting to get a sense of how to train and put himself in a position to uh, handle himself with this new role that he has. And I, I think he's only going to continue to get better. We saw that suddenness. We saw that reaction that we weren't getting earlier in the year. The game's starting to get um, easier for him again. And, and I just think he's going to continue to get better. Over here, yep. Uh, Brett Martel with AP. Do you have examples from throughout your coaching career of teams that maybe uh, didn't do as well as expected right out of the gate? but turned out to be quite formidable that have been instructive to you as, as you kind of try to figure out what are the remedies for um, not starting the way you want in a season? Yeah, I mean, I, I could probably, you know, give you um, a number in 32 years of doing this. Um, uh, the specifics I'd have to take some time to think about. But I think that... <clears throat> Unless your team is ready-made, and, and I made it pretty clear with 14 transfers and the amount of freshmen that we were going to have to play, that's a red flag. I mean, if you're really looking at it carefully, that's going to require some tweaking. That's going to require for you to really understand that there's going to have to be some some movement in terms of changing direction you know, with your team along the way. Um, we were able to do that. Um, I think, and I think we're finding the formula uh, for this team. But I think that, you know, most teams that I've had, th th there haven't been as many that are just add water <laughs> and, and just go. Uh, they all require a little bit of, you know, changing the formula as the season goes along to get the right mix. Uh, competitive edge was a phrase that was used a lot after week one. This was the first game that I think I saw LSU push first instead of get pushed. How much of that was a point of emphasis, that that, that toughness, I guess, out of your team and, and kind of taking it to the other team early? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> clearly, uh, you know, we're looking for gentlemen off the field but not gentlemen on the field. Um, and, you know, I would say that um, – you know, going back to what's the right mix. Um, I, want, I want tough guys on the field that play the game the right way. Um, I don't want to be, um, you know, a team that's penalized and, and, and we hurt our team. But, but we, want, we want guys that, that have a toughness to them. And then off the field, we want gentlemen. We might have played like gentlemen both on the field and off the field. And um, that's not who we are. And I think we're trying to find that identity. I think we're getting close to, closer to it. KJ Jefferson is a guy that's obviously been starting for years for Arkansas. Just your evaluation of him and if you've noticed anything different with his development this year. Well, I think it's like any other quarterback, right? I mean, when you get into the final year and, and where you feel like this is your year, um, you, 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 you want to do well. And, and I think, you know, he's, 
he certainly feels like this is his year to showcase himself. So, um, you know, I thought maybe, you know, if you look at the last quarters, he's trying to make plays. Um, but he's got a lot of new players around him as well, you know. So it's not all about him, you know. I mean, he's got some young players that, that have to develop or new players that have to develop around him. But he's still the big, physical, athletic quarterback that uh, scares you. Um, he's hard to bring down. Uh, he's got a live arm. Um, and, and we're going to be prepared for him to play his best against us. Hey, Coach, over here. Um, just building off of that, uh, you talked about playing against some mobile quarterbacks early in the season. And y'all played against Will Rogers, had a lot of success. Maybe not as mobile as the other quarterbacks y'all played against. But what are some things that can take away that can translate to the success y'all had on Saturday against Will Rogers against another mobile quarterback? Well, I think fundamentally, you know, a lot of the things that, that we talk about are, you know, keeping the ball in leverage the defense, you know, keeping the ball inside the pocket, you know, making quarterbacks earn it uh, instead of, you know, giving up you know, easy, um, you know, uh, rush lanes, you know, all those things that are, that are the fundamentals of playing good defense. Um, we, we weren't on, on point early on. We were much better on Saturday. Um, when we leveraged the ball, when we held the point, when, when we did our job, we made it very difficult for uh, Mississippi State. We're going to look to do the same. Coach, what are the pros and cons offensively on third and short, fourth and short, running out of the shotgun as opposed to getting under center and then handing it to a guy? And, and what do you debate there? Um, it's, it's really about, you know, where, where, where are the reps taken the most? Like, what do you do the most in your offensive structure? If you're a, a team that runs shotgun like we do 99% of the time, um, do you carve out, you know, how much time do you carve out for a direct snap offense? Because you have to carve out time for that. And, and then you have to be able to put in that uh, time within your practice structure um, to work on your direct snap. With direct snap, you have to think about direct snap quick game, play action pass, um, you know, all the things that go along with that, five-step, seven-step drop. So, you know, we have all that. Um, it's just, you know, is it from what we do with a quarterback that can run option, is that best suit a Jaden Daniels? That might suit another quarterback that we have to run a little bit more direct snap, but with a guy like Jaden Daniels, it suits us better to be in the shotgun. Yeah, Ron, right here, uh, two questions. First, uh, Harold Jackson, did he seem like he was back in his comfort zone Saturday? And the second one is, what did – Mississippi State do to take uh, Will out of his, I mean, out of his, I guess, he usually plays pretty consistent, but he, he had a rough game on the offensive line. So I think with, with Perk, I think just playing with that energy, you know, playing with that edge, um, you know, he's got to learn where that, you know, where that balancing act is, right? We don't want to get him in a position where he's taking a swing at somebody and he's out of the game, but he's got to play with energy. He's got to play with emotion. That's, that's how he plays the game the best, and I thought he brought that. I thought he brought that competitive edge, and that's, that's going to put him in a position to get to the quarterback and set the edge and run people down, and you just got to play. He's just got to play that way, and I think he was tweaking it and trying to find that. Early on, he was playing inside. He was thinking a lot. He was slowing down. I think he's coming back to finding what that balance is. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, the first penalty on the goal line, that, that was on our center. The center did not snap the ball on the clap. Uh, Will gets called for um, a uh, procedure penalty. Um, the holding, I, look, I... We know all about holding, right? Um, it, it, it is debatable um, on the call. Um, the only one that I had a conversation with him is the retaliatory action with the helmet. And I said, look, you know, you wear seven and you're a captain. you you got to make better decisions. But that's the first time I've ever talked to him about making a bad decision going into his sophomore year. So I think we're on the plus side when it comes to that with Will Campbell. Just a real quick, do you know when Greg might be back again? Do not. Okay. Do not. And what was it kind of about Whit Weeks that y'all liked and trusted in him to be able to make a start in an SEC game for the first time? 
Um, first of all, he has elite speed at the position. He can cover the field. He can run mistakes down. And when you can run mistakes down, you know, that gives you a real advantage in terms of playing the position. The second thing is he sees an open gap, he's going to take it. Uh, you saw that early in the game. He shot the gap, TFL. He's got, you know, obviously there's a learning curve there. There are some things that he did that, you know, we're going to have to continue to work with. But when you have a guy that's that athletic, uh, has a really good sense in pass coverage. He's not lost out there in pass coverage. And, and I would say that that probably is the reason why he's out there, because he's not lost in anything. Can he get better in areas? Absolutely. And then he makes up for a lot of that with, with high-end athletic ability. Um, Mississippi State was oh, in the back. Mississippi State was the first of five SEC games for the team. How do we see that this weekend's performance is um, – reciprocated in the next couple weeks? And then how have you seen the team's adjustment to the no stop clock rule on first downs? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the challenge, right? I mean, we're going to play four more SEC opponents. Um, we need all hands on deck. We've got to be able to play um, with the same kind of competitive edge, the same kind of preparation. This is this is the grind of it now, right? This is where you get into uh, your process and, and making sure that everybody has a, um, an understanding of doing the little things the right way every single day. This is, we're off and running now. This is, um, this is the good stuff for, for coaches. Players, maybe not so much. They want to get to Saturday, but we got to keep them focused on every single day. The, the, the clock rule really has no effect uh, on what we do and how we operate. Um, it, it's, it's stopped before the half, and it's stopped uh, at the end of the game. Um, so if it didn't get stopped there, maybe there would be some alterations and changes that you would make. But because it's stopped in those critical possessions, it really hasn't affected us at all. Thank you.